This is Tom Dillon, the Lifetime Liberal, and today is Tuesday, October 18th, 2016. Happy birthday, Roy. Um, this is in reference to Paul Krugman's article in the New York Times from yesterday's paper, which was entitled Their Dark Fantasies about our friends on the conservative side and uh, what a dark, dark world they envision for America. Um, now, Dr. Krugman points out, and I remember this because I'm just as old as him, <laughs> that it, in, in uh, 35, 40 years ago, whenever it was, during the, actually it's during the Vietnam War, there was a saying, America, love it or leave it. From my recollection, I remember if there was a big one that did that uh, quite a bit, that was John Wayne, if I remember that correctly. And of course, the idea was, you know, you accept America as it is in all of its imperfections, and if you don't like it, just leave it. And of course, the liberals or the, or, or the progressives or the... Uh, uh, whoever at that time were basically saying, we need to change the civil rights laws. We have an Ill illegal, immoral war going on and we need to change what's going on here. But, so that was the premise. But what's going on right now? Right now, you know, we're hearing from the right again that this is a very, very dark place that America is in. And a, a lot of the basis of all of that is that America would be a great place if women in the minorities would know their place because they're infringing on the, what, on the white privileges that the white people have had for centuries, let's just say. So it's a very, very dark America. Trump has been, has been spouting this out the whole time. And of course, a lot of others on the Republican side are also spouting this kind of nonsense out. Now, as an example, now we know Trump is really losing right now. It might take a miracle for him to win. But let's just look at what is some of his main points. His main points are crime is skyrocketing. It's going through the roof. You know, the ghettos are ablaze. You know, is that what, the, is that what the Bob Dylan said in Hurricane? Um, Crime is way, way up. You can't walk down the street in the ghetto without getting shot. You know, border crossing is way, way up, etc., etc. Now, what we really know about this is crime is down. The murder rate is down. Border crossings are down. These are statistics that have been shown to be true because we have measured these things over the years, and we've measured many, many things over the years. So, uh, we know this is true, but what does that make me? That makes me part of the conspiracy theory because a lot of these Republicans who are following Fox News, who are following Rush Limbaugh, etc., following Donald Trump, they don't believe this stuff. They don't want to believe it because it does not fit into their narrative of the America that they want to have. So, again, I'm part of the whole conspiracy. Now, a big part of that was also reinforced last week uh, by Paul Ryan, who went to the University of... Uh, uh, of Wisconsin, where he's from, in Madison, which is the liberal stronghold, in front of, I believe, 50 or 200 uh, college Republicans from Madison. I happen to know one of them. Um, and he also uh, put out a very, very dark vision of America if Hillary were to become elected. And of course, uh, let's just remember, first off, again, Paul Ryan is a huckster, he's a jiver, he's a fraud, he looks at you very sincerely with his dark hair and his blue eyes, and he spouts nonsense and gibberish, uh, but it all sounds good, but it doesn't mean anything. Now, one of his big visions is that we're going to get rid of all the debt, and the way we're going to get rid of all the debt is that we're going to decrease uh, Medicaid, Medicare, uh, Social Security, we're going to decrease every single agency except for defense. Of course, defense, we're going to skyrocket that stuff, stuff, and we're all going to do it without raising taxes, which means that all of those agencies are basically going to have to be cut out. And the same thing for um, Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare. You know, he doesn't want to help the poor. He doesn't want to help people who have worked their entire lives, who need uh, that Social Security. He doesn't want to help them. All right. And of course, he's painting <laughs> with all that. <laughs> he's painting an incredibly dark vision of America under Hillary Clinton, where he basically is saying, and he actually one of his quotes was life itself gets extinguished because all of the onerous regulations that Hillary Clinton is going to come through, where she wants to increase uh, spending on the Consumer uh, Financial Protection Board, where she wants to increase money to the SEC, uh, where she wants to increase Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare. And how would she do that? By taxing some of the rich, who are Paul Ryan's and Donald Trump's best friends. So, uh, again, uh, just by being against this, 
I'm part of the conspiracy theories of, of how bad America is. Now, um, remember again, Paul Ryan is like 46 years old. He's been on the dole since he's been 21 years old. He started working down downtown in D.C. Uh, 25 years ago as an aide. He's then became a congressman at 28, 29. It's now he's been there 16 years as a congressman. He's now Speaker of the House. He gets a great salary. He gets all of his food taken care of when he's in the, in the building. Um, so he gets an incredible health insurance, etc. He's on the dole, okay? It doesn't seem to bother him, all right? Uh, but... What also we know from statistics recently in the last year or so is, yes, Americans are actually saying that they are thriving. The Americans are actually saying that they are satisfied with their position in life based on their economic situation, that the recovery itself has been OK, even though as a progressive, I would say it's not enough. We need we should have done more. We still need to accelerate into new things. We need to accelerate into renewables. We need to increase the minimum wage. Uh, we need to work very, very hard for global climate change and a whole host of other types of things. Whereas our friends on the Republican side want to take us back, back, back. But here again, we have most Americans are fairly satisfied with their position in life in terms of economic terms right now, whereas the Republicans paint it as a dark, dark, dark time period. You know, um, uh, and remember, Paul Ryan is, his dark positions were coming right out of Anne Ryan's books, you know, and she was writing that shit in the 1950s when Eisenhower was president. <laughs> and Paul Ryan also tries to pretend that he's a really good Catholic, uh, and, but he espouses Anne Ryanism more than he does Catholicism. And I would say that uh, if you follow the beliefs of Ayn Rand, Rand, I'm sorry, is that, you know, that's the antithesis of Catholicism, because I know Catholicism, <laughs> and anything that espouses Catholicism is basically what came from the Sermon on the Mount. You can forget almost anything else, but if you espouse truly believe and work for the things that Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount. That's what makes you a good Catholic. That's not what Paul Ryan is advocating. So we have the right, basically, who hates America. Uh, there's this dark vision of a terrible dystopia that's coming up under Hillary. Uh, Trump is advocating it. Paul Ryan is advocating it. So we have Trumpism versus Ryanism versus Hillaryism, so to speak. And, the, you know, the real question is, as we're coming up to this election, will there be enough um, uh, push towards Hillary that will affect the down ballot vote so that there can actually be an opportunity for these Democrats to have all three houses and to actually enact the type of legislation that will actually protect America and have America progress forward. Because I don't think that the two strategies that Paul Ryan and Donald Trump are spouting out do shit anything for anybody.